Hello and welcome to this, I guess you could call it an information and a tutorial at the same time. Uh, I am a Comcast customer and I have had a friend that wanted to have me explain to them this weird pop-up that they were getting. And as soon as I looked into that, I know that I want to change uh, ISPs, but there's this pop-up being sent from Comcast through CAS. I'm going to adjust the microphone one second. And how it's done is it's injected into, somehow into your browser, and you have to wait for it to go away after a certain time. And if you're somebody who downloads uh, files off the internet, like Torrents is a very good example of what they're really watching right now. Excuse me, this message. Anyway, um, if you're doing that, then they're watching, I guess, they're referring to RIAA, MPAA, CAS, whoever else is behind all of this, probably CIS. Um, they're all watching these torrent sites, so if you click on something and download it, even if you do a magnet link or a torrent file itself and then go from the torrent file, somehow they're able to determine if you have a file that's a particular size that matches some reported file. And if you do, then they will send this pop-up through Comcast. Comcast is, I guess, not directly responsible for this, although I can't imagine that they're throwing a fit over having to do it. I don't think any legal action was taken to force them. I think they're more than happy to do it because they're a cable company and they lose money if you're downloading stuff. Anyway, the pop-up is probably not coming directly from Comcast, and if you try to go and, and get help at any Comcast satellite office, you're not going to find anything. They'll just give you one of those 1-800 automated ring around the rosy numbers. Um, and I spent a few hours with that trying to figure it out, and I spent a couple more hours in the chat room trying to figure it out that way. Uh, finally came to figure out that after a Google search, and I relayed this information to my friend, that what you have to do is you got to go into your primary email account at Comcast. It's your Comcast. If you're a Comcast customer, you have a Comcast primary email account. You have to log into that. And if you don't know your primary account login information or don't remember it, uh, good luck getting to it because it's going to take you two hours and a bunch of uh, spiels for special offers to go through anything on chat. And I don't even know how nightmarish it is on the phone. Plus you end up talking to people on the phone that sound like they're in India or somewhere. I think I talked to one person that sounded like they're in the middle of a marketplace. There's no way for me to hear what they were saying. But uh, you finally you'll be able to get that information and then you'll be able to log in and then you'll be able to see if they've sent you messages and they'll tell you what files are violating these terms and they give you a bunch of legal stuff and it will go away once you have deleted the pop-up will go away once you have deleted the files off your system the good news is that if it's like a, a music file like if you downloaded some music in FLAC format you could convert it and the you know delete the FLAC and then you didn't lose anything and the message will go away uh, it won't work for a movie file though and, and I don't particularly I'm not taking a side uh, either for or against this so I don't encourage uh, the stealing going on. But I also don't discourage it. I'm not on either side. And I don't consider it stealing because stealing implies violent action to take something and nobody that I know is, my friend included, is taking any kind of violent action. They're doing what's called sharing. They're sharing files back and forth. And they're not even really sharing files if you think about it. They're sharing bits of files. And the bits of files combine into a whole file, but nobody, I don't think, shares the whole entire file. It's little tiny bits. I'm not sure how it all works, but anyway, I told them what they needed to do, and they were able to get into their primary account and see those messages, delete the files that were causing it, and stop uh, that process. But now... Knowing that uTorrent is being watched, you're left with a bit of a problem. I discussed some of this over here on my blog. I'll give you a link. 
this is my tech blog and this will tell you a little more about all of this uh, stuff and those are my tests that I was trying to find out you know to see how things were working and what they were doing and, and I was trying to test with the files that my friend had uh, had found and, and got in trouble for so I was trying to find out what was going on so you're left with a couple of options at this point um, you can use Emule but for some reason nobody wants to use Emule and nobody wants to update or put any uh, good files there so good luck trying to find anything of any good quality through email and most of your anime uh, you're gonna find is going to be uh, subtitled it's not going to be English dubbed so if you're a fan of English dubbed in your anime you're not going to get it there and if you try to ask for subtitled you're going to get uh, laughed at mocked or yelled at one of the three oh and if you try to complain about uh, files not showing up at these kind of places like share the files is one of the communities uh, I used to be involved with this in the past but I'm not anymore um, that yeah, they'll, they'll kick you out of your account to share the files if, if you disagree with them or argue with them or say anything about a file that's that's not there so it's just not worth you're better off just buying it because you got Amazon live video now you got uh, You've got things at YouTube you can buy for, I think it's a single price. you got uh, and DVDs and Blu-ray are pretty cheap at Amazon right now. Uh, overall, you're just better off buying the thing and having it legitimately. Um, other than that, you can continue trying to do your downloads. Uh, if you're somebody who's doing that and you're getting these CAS messages, you can just continue doing it see what happens it's a six strike you're out kind of a law that they got going but nobody's reported what happens after six strikes if it were me I wouldn't want to chance that um, you can try to get a VPN and then you have to pay for that so again you're better off just paying for the blu-ray disc or the DVD or the CD or whatever it is you're after or just getting it online. I mean, Amazon is going to get you pretty much everything that you could, for about the same price you're going to be paying for a VPN per month, per month, you could probably get a lot of the stuff that you really want at Amazon. So I would just encourage you to go that route. Um, but in an effort to find some kind of alternative solution, it occurred to me that what they're tracking are these websites. They have to be lurking somewhere, tracking websites, maybe putting fake torrents up and tracking torrents that are clicked on, maybe even real torrents and using it like fish. Fishermen, you know, trying to fish for uh, for the fish that'll nibble on and bite those hooks and then they'll be able to, to tell what you grab. But they have to be observing uh, these sites that you go to. So the solution then is to not be at those sites to, if you're going to get anything, to get things. So I was doing some looking around and I found this. And if I can, it might take me a second to actually find it. Yes. So this is a program called Torrent Search and what this allows you to do is you can search for whatever it is that you want. This will only give you a torrent file. It will not give you the actual file. It will just give you a dot torrent file. And those are legal for you to have as far as I know. It's, it's trying to get the actual file that will get you in trouble. But this will allow you to search for those dot torrent files. And you can put them into a directory and where, where you have your torrent program is able to automatically load them up. So there's no uh, going on the internet being involved I don't think there's much risk of your IP somehow they're, they're seeing your IP and tracking it back and the whole reason for a VPN or a proxy uh, people are trying to use Tor and these kind of things is to hide your IP the problem with Tor is I describe it that article that I gave you a link to just a little bit ago and I'll try and put it at the bottom of this post is that there's something about the outgoing that reveals the IP so that doesn't work and I2P requires torrents that are specifically done through I2P. So you can't 
do anything that's a normal torrent file. You have to do I2P torrent files. You have to use I2P programs, so it's completely worthless as far as anonymizing anything. So both of those options are just a headache and they're not going to do any good, but this is a way to look for files without even going on the internet, although this probably has to have some kind of, uh, I don't know how it works, it must have some internet access, so I don't know for sure what, what all is being seen, but I don't see how the people that are watching these things can watch this. They can watch the torrent files themselves, but I don't see how they'd be able to watch a program and what's being searched for within it. So it should be safe, or at least safer, than doing anything else. And, and again, whatever you download here isn't a file, it's a .torrent file. So it's not illegal as far as I understand it. So here's one way to do it. And I've used this, so this is uh, something that I can recommend. It does have a tendency to kind of search for a while and keep searching. And it does have some weird bugs every once in a while. I feel like I'm going to type in something into the box and it's not typing even though it's highlighted and I have to click and do some stuff. But overall I've had very few issues with it and it's a very excellent program. The next thing you need is you need a, a decent torrent client. And by decent I mean not uTorrent, not BitTorrent. Uh, you don't want any of that stuff with adware and malware. Um, there's another one that I can't think of that I was I was going to try that apparently came bundled with uh, it's deceptive. Um, I narrowed it down. I used to use something called Tixaddy when I was doing it, but the problem with this is for some reason, and I don't know why, uh, somebody says that it's being blocked on what they call trackers, private trackers. So you can't really get much with it. So if you try to use this, then you might find that certain files just aren't going to, you're not going to be able to get certain things. It's just not going to work. So the next best option, I think, is there's two of them. Uh, and we're going to talk about the last one more in depth. That's the only one I'm going to go more in depth on to. Um, the other one doesn't need much explanation. It works pretty good right out of the box, but it's kind of hard to see on a 1080p screen. So you have Deluge. So this is a good free, and I don't recall it having any ad or any garbage in it, uh, program. And when you go to, let me see if I can remember, there should be a link somewhere. Is it right here or is it? Yeah. There's Python 2.7 versions and then... Uh, the regular, I did 2.7, but I don't know if it requires Python to be installed. But this is the first client that I would recommend. Uh, I don't know how it's received by private trackers, but this is a very simple program, and it, it allows you to, to do the job of collecting files from .torrent files if you wish to do that. And then the other option that I recommend but it has some problems, and I want to talk about that, is this. There's something fishy going on with this particular program because everybody is strangely quiet about this issue that when you open up the program and you click uh, you, you click search, and if you don't have Python installed, it'll install Python and give you a search tab. You click search, you get results, and you click the download link, nothing happens. It stays yellow, there's a little yellow circle on the bottom, and it doesn't connect. And that's even after you have set up your ports properly, or forwarding your ports properly, and you've set everything up in a program properly, it still does it and there's no explanation there's no help nobody says anything at all about it they all say that you didn't set it up correctly but if you use any other program and i know because i used deluge first when i was testing this uh, i had deluge on the same ports that i tested this on and this one didn't work and deluge worked fine this program has some kind of strange bug it might be intentional it might not be intentional i don't know why they would do an intentional bug but there's something going on 
and I'm on a Windows 7 64-bit system, so this would be relevant to Windows 7 64-bit. I don't know about 32-bit, but I would assume the same for that. I don't know about other operating systems. Um, it's preventing that download from happening. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate the download of anything. I don't know. Well, I guess I could look for a Linux distribution, and those are legal. Um, maybe I'll do that, but I will show you how to set this up, because this one has also built into it, uh, you can use that that torrent search that I showed you, but this one has a search built right into it, and it has search engine plugins, and it's also very comprehensive uh, for searching for torrents. And this one will I don't know if this one gives you the torrent file and then the real file or how it works, but uh, I think this one's probably a better search engine overall. So I'm going to show you now how to set this up. And then uh, you'll have an option that you can use that'll be a little safer and less problematic when you're dealing with, uh, if you're on an ISP like Comcast that might be throttling or might be tracking you and giving you these injected warnings. So I'm going to click on my link here. Okay, so I have Qubit Torrent started up. And it's right now it's showing yellow. But I know that that is not true because I've just tested it and I know that it's working. So if I go to my preferences, and I have, of course, my search tab in here, and that's what that looks like. Not a lot of options or details like you will have in the Torrent Search. If you want more details, more advanced search, you got to use Torrent Search. So I've gone here to my, where do they have them in here? Uh, there it is. Losing it. Having trouble thinking. So I've done my configurations here, how I want this to work. And there's something else we've got to talk about called uh, this KIB. It's called Kibitz. So here's where you add a folder that you want to automatically watch and get stuff from. So here's my port, and I've turned this off because I never use that. It's not secure, and I don't have a firewall. I don't need one. I don't do anything that requires a firewall. So here's where I've set my uh, my speed here. We'll talk about this in a minute. This is a different designation, and I think this m could be part of the issue. I'm not sure. I've just left this at default other than changing these numbers. And you see all the different options you have here. And I've turned off update. And then under um, advanced, I'll show you how I did here. I have a range set up. So I have a min and starting here, and I have a max starting there. Um, don't know if this is necessary or not, but I'm going to show you everything I did so that you can do the same uh, for your own particular port forwarding of your system. You don't want to use the same numbers as the ones you have forwarded. I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how to forge your ports. I'm going to assume that you know how to do that. And you're somebody who wants to come in and use this program and are having problems with it. And I want to show you how to fix them. So if I go here to... Okay. You will find that this in Windows 7 64-bit under Users, Your Username, App Data, Roaming not not the local but roaming you'll find a qubit torrent folder after the first time that you've run the program you have set your options and you've exited okay so you gotta make sure you do that first so you go in here and you set all your different options you press ok you press apply you exit and then upon that exit I believe it's upon the exit the first opening of the program either upon the first opening of the program or the first exit of the program after you've installed it, it generates two folders. One folder being in roaming, one folder being in local, and roaming is where we're located right now. So your C, where you have Windows 7, your user, your username, app data, roaming, qubit torrent, you get these three, uh, well you'll probably just see two files. You'll see it in any file and a data file. And this is what you configure to change a few things, and this is where we're going to add some stuff. 
and this fixed the problem for me as far as I know so this is how to deal with it so I'm double clicking on it and opening it up it's going to be a little hard for you to read um, so I went down through here and I decided what I wanted I did this minimize to tray I thought I'd like that I don't have anonymous mode on I'm not running I2P too much of a hassle Minus one, I think, means disabled or false, but they use minus one for whatever reason. Okay, now I did put in here uh, a little bit ago a port range max. I copied this, used the same word, and said port range max and added a number. It's since deleted it, so I'm assuming that that wasn't necessary, but I set and checked that my range here match the range of my port forwarding which the minimum is 24 so 24,000 so I have that there and continuing on so that was one thing I was going to recommend to do do a port range max and add a number that would be your maximum of range of your ports but it's obviously not necessary um, or else it would still be there I'm wondering if it was the kibitz setting because I think I set it really high initially because I thought it was like KBS and you don't want to do that because it isn't KBS. So here's your outgoing port range min. Updates are uh, false. And then I get down here there's an outgoing port range max. And I set a few other things in here, but just set this to your system and, oh, wait a minute. Here's outgoing ports. What do I have a ports max? Oh, it did keep it. Okay. Okay, so it moved it down here for some reason. That's odd. Okay, so we are going to do it. So under here, under connection port range min, copy the, the all this stuff here. And I'm not going to do this uh, because I already have it down there further on. But just underneath, press Control V, paste it in, and call it Max. Now, when you set your port forwarding, you can forward a single port or you can forward a range. I would recommend you do a range. And mine runs from 16,000 to 32,000 for the duration of this test that I've been doing. So. Uh, I would set mine to 31999, uh, just one before 32, so I could start whatever I wanted next at 32 if I wanted to forward a different range of ports. So this is what I would do, uh, but use your unique configuration. But do that, set this up, and then um, and make sure you've exited Qubit Torrent. So after you've typed that in, press Save. I'm not going to do that because it's already down there. And then on your outgoing ports, match it with this. Uh, when you set up your port range forwarding, make sure your UDP and your TCP ports are the same. There should be an option in your router configuration that allows you to set those up to be the same. So use the same for both. You don't want to make it complicated on yourself. Unless for some reason you have to, to have your UDP be separate from your TCP. Just let them be the same. So this here is probably... Uh, UDP and this is probably TCP although why they have to use it in other words that they're using here I don't know but um, and then once you save it and start a qubit torrent it's probably going to move that like it did mine down here and then below that you'll see your outgoing ports max which also matches you'll see here so these two are the same um, can't get a good grip there so those two match and these two match and then after that I think that was the most important thing here you're pretty much done there but there's one more thing we're gonna do so press save I'm not gonna do it I don't need to it's already set up the way I want I'm gonna go to speed test and we're gonna talk about this kibitz thing because it's odd why they can't use just one stupid <laughs> designation? We've got kibitz and capital KB and then lowercase s and then we've got KBPS and MBPS and I don't even know how many other things. But I'm going to show you how this works. 
So if you go to speed test, I don't know if you can change what you get, but you're going to get an MBPS if I remember correctly. Yes, capital M, lowercase bps. Uh, so I found this other site here, convertme.com, and it's in English. And I typed in five. Technically, I have six, but I'd like to give myself a little slack, but we'll work with six. So if I have six megabit per second, then it's actually not kilo kibits, as I said. Um, it's kibite. So K I B B Y T E, kibite per second. And so that's 732. So I would take this information. Sorry about the confusion. Hopefully this will explain it. I got confused on this one. And now I would go in here, and now this is where you would set your stuff. And obviously, you can see how, how going super high with it, because you think you're in a different measurement, would be a problem. But I'm beginning to think that that is not what was causing the issue. Oh, look, and we're green now. And this has just been running for a little while. So if you've been following along, and you've been yellow before, and you're green now, then problem solved. If not, leave a comment, and... And uh, we'll try to figure out what's going on. But I'm hoping that this will solve everybody's problem. And there's just a few extra entries in the any file as far as I can tell. But to go back to speed. So obviously I have the ability to use up to 700. So I will change this now. I will actually change this to 300 this direction. That's for the... Uh, no. Excuse me. 300 this direction that's download and then for the upload going back to speed test we have five so we assume that we have maybe three at max um, and we won't use the whole thing we're going to use a part of it so if I say three I now have 300 and 66 of these kibites so I'll take that into here so I divided this actually I could go to 350 no that's the wrong one that one down here I can barely see my screen from back here otherwise qubit torrent is awesome on this so I halved that, so I'll half this to 150. And that should be reasonable. Now I know that I will be having what kind of speed. So 150 would probably equal like a 1 or a 2 kibit. Um, I don't know how to translate that. Let's try one. So that's one, two, two, kibite, I mean. One dot two. Okay, so this is pretty close to 150. Um, so what I'll be getting then in a more normal uh, that I would understand, yeah, I'll say KBS would be 150. That'll be my upload. Uh, 150, and then my megabit, of course, will be 1.2 megabit for the upload. So that should work. That gives me plenty of breathing room if I was going to use this and wanted to do browsing. I'm not obviously going to be using this. This is just for demonstration. I wanted to show you guys what to do, but I don't mess with this stuff. I was just testing this out and trying to figure out a solution, and I think I found it. So once you have all your settings here where you want, press apply. Let's look for something legal. We'll look up Linux. And we're going to test and see if it's working. If this is still yellow down here, we'll find out if it's working in just a second. Because when it's not working, you have everything set up correctly, you have your speed set up, now that you know how to do that, and probably knew it before, probably smarter than I am, figured it out. 
Uh, you have everything set up, your port for is all set up, but it's still yellow and you're not getting anywhere. You click on this, you click download, nothing happens. Oh, before you do a search, always go in here to search engine. Well, not always. First time you open a program, I don't think you have to do it every time. But go to check for updates and a bunch of boxes will pop up and this one will say okay because mine is done. But when you first run, a bunch of boxes will pop up and you'll be able to update all of these. These are all the search engines, that it, all the places it searches here. And these are plugins. These aren't the actual sites that are being searched. It's done through Python or something. So these are all updated now. But make sure you run that update before you do a search. So we'll look for some kind of a Linux distribution. I don't know what a legal version of Linux. I think Red Hat is illegal. You have to pay for it. Same for Fedora. I'll look for some. Here's a Mops Linux. And notice it's a torrent file. Okay, so this says 4 gigs, but it says it doesn't know if there's any seeders or leechers on here. So I would skip that and go a little further. Slackware is, is definitely free. I remember that one, or it was. Um, so what happens here is I don't have to have a folder to have it auto load from. I think if I click this, I think it gives me the torrent file and then it turns it into the file file but I'm not 100% sure how it works I'm gonna click this yes and now we know that it's working it's asking for a directory we have some options here we can play with if we want we can start it force a hash check figure out where we're gonna put it and it'll save the directory you set we'll press OK now we're transferring and we'll see what kind of speed we get we're getting speed in kibitz, so let's see how fast this goes. We gave it 350, so let's see. Looks like it's going to march right up to 350, which is probably somewhere along the lines of 3 megabits per second. Let me see. A kibite. I keep saying kibit, and it's kibite. It's just under 3 megabits per second. And then in other terminologies, it's like we're getting 375 kilobytes a second. We can up that. We can, we can go higher than that if we really want to push it. But this is just using half of my available bandwidth. So we'll have a time estimate here. This is 4 gig file. It's saying it'll take three hours to download, so that's a gig an hour. So if I didn't want to wait, I could I could increase the speed. But now you know how to do it. You know where to go to convert it and figure out what you're going to get. I'm not going to continue with this, of course. Um, I have solved the issue and relayed the information to my friend, and he'll have this tutorial that he can look at, and I'm all finished on it. Um, and hopefully that will solve the problem. You should be able to start using Qubit Torrent. If you like Deluge, you can use that. If you like Qubit Torrent, you can use that. I would recommend Qubit Torrent over Deluge right now. And then there's one other one that's okay, but we're not going to go into that right now. I think these two are the top two BitTorrent clients without spyware, without adware, without funny garbage going on, and that are probably accepted by all the tractors or the majority of them that are out there right now. That's what to me defines a top file. So I'm going to delete and we can also delete the files from the hard disk. What does this mean? Oh, this is a remember choice. So I'm going to have it have amnesia because maybe I want to not delete the files from the hard disk later. Yeah. I wonder what that means because it won't let me click it again. I guess I'll have to see what happens next time I have a file that I want to try to do something with. Uh, that concludes this kind of public service announcement slash tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them at the bottom of this video. And I will answer as quickly as I can and help you out. Hopefully this will get you up and running if you've been struggling trying to get QBitTorrent working. Um, did I show you where to download it from? Did we go over that? I want to make sure. I think I did. One of these, you had to click a link underneath to get to SourceForge. 
and I don't think it was this one. Ah, one last thing before you go. There's two links. You get this bigger one here, and then you get this other one called SourceForge. I would trust SourceForge over FOSSUB, although I don't know FOSSUB that well. But get the original so you know that you're getting one that, uh, from the original Qubit Torrent where it's hosted at SourceForge, and you know there's going to be the proper file. I want to press cancel, and we're leaving. So I will see you whenever I do another tutorial.